Yes, that, that, that's correct. Uh, and apologies from the WHO country representative, uh, Dr. Abdi Nasir, uh, who's not able to join uh, to other commitments, but he's asked me to, to give a short statement on, on his behalf and then to stand ready to, to take questions. So, I mean, WHO, it, it's deeply concerned by the impact of the recent escalation of violence on health systems in Lebanon, including the rising number of attacks on healthcare workers and facilities. Since September the 16th, attacks on healthcare have recorded, leaving behind 65 deaths and 40 injuries among health staff. Health facilities have been greatly impacted. More than 96 primary healthcare, sa- healthcare centers and health facilities have been forced to close in the south due to the rising facilities. Five hospitals were reported non-functioning, either due to physical or infrastructural damage. And an additional four hospitals have been partially evacuated and have required the transfer of patients, including critical dialysis and cancer patients, to other hospitals while continuing to try to maintain emergency services, albeit with very limited uh, capability. With the present rising tensions in the south and across many parts of the country, including in the suburbs of Beirut, Lebanon has witnessed a sudden and massive displacement with an estimated 165,000 people becoming internally displaced in a single week. And as Matthew had mentioned, in many cases, these are people who have left their houses, their homes, within minutes uh, of being warned and therefore have left everything behind, their chronic, their critical medicines, uh, their whole coping mechanisms. As the number of displaced people increases and the population is left with limited access to emergency and trauma care, as well as to access to essential health services, including routine vaccine and essential child and maternal health care services, we're facing a situation where there is a much higher risk of disease outbreak, such as acute watery diarrhea, hepatitis A, and a number of other vaccine-preventable diseases. It's important to remember that Lebanon's health system has been impacted not just in the last few months, but by years of economic and political instability. Over the past five years, Lebanon has suffered the departure of a large number of its health workforce, limitations in essential health supplies, expensive out-of-pocket services, and the lack of steady access to to electricity impacting service delivery. All of these challenges have deepened the risk of disease and poverty, which go hand in hand. We cannot ignore that Lebanon is also host to the highest number of refugees per capita, including an estimated 1.5 million Syrian refugees and at least 11,000 refugees of of other nationalities. The compound effect of economical challenges Instability, migration, displacement have resulted in significant challenges for health system and its ability to deliver. Despite the challenges, WHO continues to support the Ministry of Public Health of Lebanon in response to the rising IDP challenges. WHO is working with the Ministry of Public Health and partners to conduct a rapid assessment of the IDP's access to health care to better mainstream essential services. The assessment is ongoing in parallel with work to support the Epidemiological Surveillance Unit as the Ministry of Public Health looks to expand and improve early warning surveillance capacities, especially at the IDP shelters. Special attention is given to the detection of acute watery diarrheal diseases and vaccine preventable diseases, lice and scabies, among other potential outbreak threats. Surveillance is also enhanced through the continued support to reference laboratories to the delivery of stocks and of testing agents. WHO is also supporting the Ministry through the procurement and delivery of essential medical and surgical supplies. Since the escalation of violence in September, WHO has procured over 116 metric tons of supplies, including surgical trauma supplies, enough to perform 4,000 surgical interventions and cholera and mental health medicines enough to treat around 100,000 patients. WHO is also supporting with the coordination of the deployment of emergency medical teams to help to train and capacitate local surgeons uh, at the referral hospitals. Nevertheless, the, the needs keep mounting as the war goes on. And as Matthew mentioned, the only solution is de-escalation and peace. 
WHO will continue to work to respond to the emergency whilst we also advocate for peace and for health for all. Thank you.